Hey you and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. In today's video I want to talk about ways you can make your artworks look more realistic. Now I'm focusing on soft pastel since this is the medium I like to work in most, but some of the tips are a little bit more generic and can be applied in whatever medium you use. Before I start, if you want to learn even more, subscribe to my newsletter. You'll find the link in the description below. I send out one newsletter each month and included with that you'll receive four reference pictures you can use to create your own art pieces. Some of the pictures I've already sent out are now passing by on your screen. Besides getting those reference pictures, you'll also be eligible to download my ebook, in which I give you three more tips to help you improve your drawings. Not only will you get these tips, you'll also get examples and actionable steps you can take. So make sure you get your copy now. The first thing you need to focus on before anything else is of course your line art. No matter how good you are at putting in those accurate highlights or shadows, if your line art is off, you will never get a very realistic outcome. Now there is quite a lot of controversy around the topic of tracing, but that discussion is for another video. So in a nutshell, I don't think it's cheating. For me, this is mostly due to the fact that I can create drawings way more quickly this way. I work a full-time job apart from my art, and if I didn't trace, I would not be able to get as many drawings done as I would like. So my suggestion would be, if you want to practice of the, on the color part of drawing, then trace away. This way you will be able to get more drawings in and your skills related to color will improve faster, since you can practice more as you are not spending hours mapping out your sketch. I also believe that when you're just starting out, even tracing will start to improve the way you see a subject. This might be only slightly, but still it will give you a little jump start to your freehanding skills. At least this was the case for me. Now don't get me wrong, I also love to freehand, but when it comes to accurate proportions, unless you've already spent a lot of time on your freehanding skill, it will never be as good as a traced outline. And the purpose of this video is to help you improve the realism in your drawings. You've also got the grid method, which is something I use for large projects, but this will take a lot more time than simply tracing. One of the fastest ways for me to get my line art down is the following. I will use the screen of my laptop or TV to put my reference on. Next I'll tape a piece of glassine paper over this. I can see through this paper. So this is ideal for what I want to do. After I get down my line art, I will color a piece of printer paper with some pastel. For this I choose the lightest color that will still show up on my pastel mat paper. I tape down my pastel mat to wherever I'm working. On top of this goes the sheet that I just colored in with some soft pastel. And then I will lay my glassine paper with the outlines on top of this. Now all that is left to do is simply go over the lines that I see one more time. Because of the pressure you apply on the top paper, the paper with the pastel will transfer it onto the pastel mat. You just need to be careful when taking the top two layers off that you don't move it. If you would move it across the pastel mat underneath, there is a big chance that some of the pastel on your middle sheet will smudge onto your bottom part. So to finish point number one, the accuracy of your line art is super important when it comes to realistic drawings. Stop. The second thing I want to stress out is don't be afraid to go too dark. One of the biggest ways to make an impact on your drawings and how they look is to use dark values for your shadows. I can show you what I mean by comparing two of my drawings. I'll show you the drawing of Jasmine, which I did at the start of my drawing journey, and then I'll compare this to the one of The Rock, which I drew much later. You can see that the drawing of the rock looks more realistic in comparison with the other one. This is mostly because I wasn't afraid to amp up those dark values. Now another thing that makes a big difference are the highlights of course, but for now I want to stress those darker values. Let me point out some of the areas where I darken the values in comparison to each other. One area is underneath the chin. Now if you look to the drawing of Jasmine, you can see that I didn't do as much there. This makes a world of difference. Another important area that I, that I can see is around the ears. Now, if you are just starting out, this can feel a little bit scary. You can see this was the case for me as well, since I didn't go too bold on the drawing with Jasmine. I would just suggest to start slowly and with each drawing you do, experiment a little bit with going darker. With each drawing you make, you will feel more confident and before you know it, this will come with ease to you. The next point is don't worry about the details too much. The biggest reason why your art pieces will look realistic is because of good values and right proportions. 
You might think you need to get everything in your artwork exactly the way you see it, but this isn't the case. With a lot of realism artists, if you were to look closely to their pieces, you would see a lot of lines and color instead of a cohesive, perfect looking drawing. And this is okay, your drawing isn't supposed to be looked at from 10 centimeters distance. People will look at your drawings from a normal viewing distance. You don't see people at the museum going up to the artworks and looking at it from up close. No, they take a step back to see everything that is going on in the piece in front of them. A good example of this would be animal fur. You don't need to get in every hair that you can see. If you were to do this, this would be overkill and the amount of details would actually backfire. Much better is to look at the hairs as clumps of hair, where you will always add detailed hairs. This will have a much more realistic look than trying to get in every single hair. Number four would be to work in layers. No matter which medium you are using, if you want something to look realistic, you will need more layers than for any other style. You cannot just simply match the colors you see in your reference and just add those in your drawing. This will never give you the amount of depth you're looking for. A great example again of this you can see in animal fur. On a side note, I know I tend to reference a lot of animals and fur, but that is simply because this is what I love to draw and therefore have the most experience with. So I'll show a part of my Bernese mountain dog that I drew. I start with my under layer and I blend this out. Then I'm first going to use the lightest colors that I need and here at the top part I'm using a darker color. But after this I'm going to go over it again with that light color and I'm going to switch this around a few times until I'm satisfied with how it looks. This is how you create that depth in your work which will also help with how realistic something comes across. And lastly I'm going to end with saying that values are way more important than colors. You might think that it's all about the colors, but that actually isn't the case. I can show you this photo with some of the colors using a color picker tool. And now let me prove to you why colors don't matter as much as you might think with the following. If I change the lighting, the colors have changed, yet the photo still looks realistic, right? I am going to make a video explaining value and color more in depth, but for now just remember that color applies to the actual color and value applies to how light or darker color is. This is the reason why I mentioned you shouldn't be afraid to go dark earlier. The same thing applies to your highlights as well, but I won't do a section on that right now because I like to keep my videos short and sweet. So what is important when it comes to your values? Make sure you plan out where your darkest values and your lightest areas need to go. Although you can use light colors over dark colors with pastel, you will never reach the same intensity as if there was no pastel there. Going over darker values kind of gives your light value a limitation as to how bright it can be. The same goes the other way around, even if it's much more subtle. In some mediums, colored pencil for example, you don't even have this luxury because if you need something to be white, once you've put some other color on the area, there is no way you can get it back to the crisp white you had before. So the key here is to really think through where your darkest values and your lightest values are, especially for your underlayer, because you can then use your underlayer as your guide and in the next layers this will help you on where you need to play around with the contrast some more. And that's it for this video, I hope you found these tips helpful and that they can help you improve your realistic drawings. I hope you liked this video, if you did please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate your support as this helps to grow my channel and reach other people just like yourself. Hope to see you again next Friday and in the meantime have a great week.